OK, folks, welcome to lecture 17, the first algebra lecture. So when we're presented with a problem like this, something minus 4 equals 1, most people be happy to say, well, the question mark must be 5. And this is really what algebra is all about. Except instead of question marks, we use letters. The reason we use letters is there's lots of them, so we can have lots of different question marks in a problem, etc. But the main thing, guys, is that the letters change all the time. But that doesn't matter. They all just represent numbers. So all the rules we've learned so far absolutely apply to everything in algebra. All of these letters, X, Y, Z, A, B, C, U, V, A, S, they all just represent numbers. Brief history of algebra, very brief. <clears throat> Fairly complex history from Babylon, India, Greece, Persia, France. So it kind of developed various societies and stuff, dealt with algebra in different ways. Al-Khwarizmi was one of the leading thinkers on the topic and wrote one of the first papers in which Al-Khabar appeared, which means the science of equations when loosely translated. And Al-Khwarizmi would be one of the kind of top guys for algebra in the same way Pythagoras kind of stands above uh, the field of trigonometry. Now, the Arabic scholars of the 9th century developed a bunch of laws which might look obvious but they took quite a while to develop and they had to kind of be shown that these rules hold true for all numbers so the first rule is that when you add two numbers it doesn't matter the order in which they're written 7 plus 5 is the same as 5 plus 7 but if we're subtracting this rule doesn't hold true 7 minus 5 is not the same as 5 minus 7. From multiplication, uh, the order doesn't matter. xy is the same as yx. 7 by 5 is the same as 5 by 7. And this, guys, we'd see later is why we always write, if we have several term, uh, several variables in a term, we always write them alphabetically. And this just makes your life easy. So if you end up with, say, 3, Y, X, Y, Z, X, then always line them up, X, Y, Z. And this rule says that that's an okay thing to do. Final rule, then, is that for division, this doesn't hold true. X over Y is not the same as Y over X. So these are kind of the fundamental rules of algebra. We don't use them very often, we don't, but we do refer to them. So essentially, in addition, we can jiggle the values around and in the same with multiplication. We don't have that freedom with subtraction or division. So just a few definitions, an expression, an algebraic expression. We've come across these before, but without the word algebraic. So any mathematical statement involving variables. So as soon as you've got letters in your statement, so 3 plus 4 minus 6, that's an expression. But if we start putting letters in there, now that's an algebraic expression. If we put in an equal sign and we have variables, now it's an algebraic equation. The bits of the equation or expression are called a term. So here we have a statement. It's an equation because it's got an equal sign. It's an algebraic equation because there's variables. And there's three terms. So a term doesn't need a letter or anything. Once it stands on its own, it's a term. There could be any amount of variables multiplied together but it's still just one term. This expression, it's algebraic, 
and it has four terms. Here's another equation with four terms. So just to be so we're familiar with the language, when I'm talking about a term, any bit where the parts are multiplied together, these are terms. And we need to treat each term equally. That's the essence of uh, algebra and most maths. So brackets are everywhere in algebra. It's really important to use them properly. So minus 3 to be squared and minus 3 in brackets to be squared are very different things. So minus 3 to be squared, it's still minus and the 3 gets squared. So that gives us minus 9. If we have minus 3 in a brackets to be squared, that means each bracket is multiplied by each other. So now we have minus 3 by minus 3. Minus by a minus is a plus, And 3 by 3 is still 9. So if we see terms like this, they're both different. And you've got to be really careful. So if the brackets are there, we're going to be multiplying the term by itself. So minus 3x squared is just simply minus 3x squared. But minus 3x to b squared, minus 3 by minus 3, we simply square each part. Remember, the squared comes in. Minus by a minus gives us a plus. 3 by 3 is 9, and x squared. Now, evaluating expressions. So if we're asked to evaluate an expression, everywhere there is an x, we simply replace with our value. So these x's will be replaced by a minus 1. And now we just have to work out. We have to be careful, minus 1 to be squared is plus 1. Here we have a minus by a minus, but we'll take a look. So minus 1 to be squared is plus 1. By 3, we'll get 3. Minus by a minus is a plus, 2 by 1. Oops. Sorry, guys, the sequence is a little bit out. So when we add these together, we'll get y is equal to 9. And now we've actually developed a coordinate, but we'll get into this later. But minus 1 is our x value, and the equivalent value is 9. And this then, if we repeat this several times, this allows us to draw a line. We could change let x equal to 1, let x equal to 2, let x equal to 4. We'll get different y values, and this will allow us plot a graph. And we'll see this later on, um, just towards the end of the semester. So that's evaluating an expression. You simply replace your variable. You're told the name of the variable, in this case it's x, and we're told what its value is, and we simply substitute it in. So now, here's a question for you guys to try, just evaluating expressions. So here's our expression, and now put 2 in for x, evaluate, put minus 1 in for x, evaluate, and put a half in for x, and evaluate. So just be careful, with, especially with the minus and with the fraction. So our, our fraction laws will just come into play for part C. So just give those a go. We'll push on. When we're multiplying an algebraic expression by a number, simply every term in the expression is multiplied by the number. So this is called expanding or multiplying out the brackets. So here we have 4 by x squared minus 2. The 4 simply comes in and is multiplied by each term individually. If there's minuses involved, be particularly careful. But again, the same principle. The minus 2 comes in and is multiplied by each term. So the first term will be positive. 6x squared, sorry, negative, not, and the second term will be positive, because minus by a plus is a minus. So even when things get complicated, 
Numbers follow number rules. Powers follow power rules. So we have minus 2 by 1. That's going to give us minus 2. x squared by x squared gives us x to the power of 4. Now minus 2 by minus 2 gives us plus 4. x squared by x gives us x to the power of 3. Minus 2 by 3. That'll give us minus 6 with the numbers, and we've still got the x squared to take care of. So just be particularly careful, especially when there's minuses and powers involved. There's quite a lot going on, and it's easy to make a simple slip. When things get a bit more complicated, there's lots of ways of doing these guys. You know, I'm some people will do 2a minus one so whichever way you want is absolutely valid just i like the way i'm going to show you you might not have seen it before so there's lots of ways of doing these guys i'm just suggesting this way as a particularly solid one and it's called the foil technique some of you will have seen it most of you might not it's not that common in irish schools so first of all we expand the brackets this is what we're multiplying and each term, guys, inside the left-hand bracket must multiply by each term inside the right-hand bracket. That's what we have to do. But I use this technique, FOIL. And just simply FOIL stands for multiply the first terms together. 2a by 2a. That gives us 4a squared. Now multiply the outer terms together. That gives us minus 2a. Then we multiply the inner terms together. Again, minus 2a. And finally, we multiply the last terms in each bracket. And that gives us plus 1. Now we group. We have minus 2a, minus 2a. That gives us minus 4a. So we tidy up. And this is our new expression. So let's multiply and out those brackets. And again, guys, there's lots of different ways of doing it. I'm just suggesting this. I find this way is you're less likely to get lost in the middle of the problem if you remember first, outer, inner, last, foil. We'll be using this, guys, in the next slide. So just kind of remember it when we multiply these. Sorry. When we multiply these, we get this. So when things get a bit more complicated... Here we have 2a minus 1 to be cubed, which is 2a minus 1 by itself, and then by itself again. So we're just going to use the same technique, guys, as before. So for the black, I'm keeping the, the third one in red because we'll do that at, at a later step. So our first step is exactly the same from the previous slide. We use foil first outer inner last and we get the same result as what we just had from the previous slide so I won't go through that in great detail again and now we have the brackets waiting their turn so what happens here guys I've just used different colors the 2a goes in and multiplies by each term separately and then the minus 1 goes in and multiplies each term separately so just to make sure you don't get lost, guys, we have three terms here, we have two terms here, we have three by two. We should have six terms in our solution before we tidy up and compress things back. So we'll multiply each term in the black bracket by the 2a. So 2a by 4a squared, 8a cubed, 2a by minus 4a, keep the sign, minus 8a squared plus 2a. Now the minus 1 goes in, the red one, minus 1 is multiplied by each term separately. Minus 4a squared, we simply change the sign on each one, this will be plus 4a, and then minus 1 for the last term. So you can see we've got six terms, don't mind the colours, that's just to kind of show where they came from. And now, guys, we start to group by powers. So we're looking for, there's only one 8a cubed, so he sits on his own. 
there's a squared, there's a squared. That gives us minus 12a squared. There's a's on their own, so group them by the powers on a. That'll give us plus 6a. So when we tidy it all up, we get this. So the 12a comes from these two. The 6a comes from these two. And that, guys, is kind of as far as we'll go with expanding out brackets, kind of multiplying out something to be cubed. You know, it's just, it's an important skill. We don't come across it a huge amount in the, in the course, but just you do need to be kind of armed with it in case we do come across it. So another question for you guys to try, obviously multiplying out brackets. So question A. Question B, this is similar to the foil one. And then we have a cubed one. So take your time, guys. You know, just spend a little bit of time on them. It's good practice, like, to get this stuff down properly. Now we take a look at dividing expressions. And here we have something that looks quite tricky. But our rules of maths, guys, are still the same. If I gave you 2 over third, 2 over 3 divided by 1 over 4, we'd still flip the second fraction and multiply. And then it's top by top, bottom by bottom. So the rules are the exact same, guys. Each of these letters is just a number. So our first step is to flip the divisor and multiply. Now it's top by top, bottom by bottom. So we get 2a by b squared on top and 2a by c squared. Notice everything is written alphabetically, guys. This is really important because it helps with your cancellation and helps keeps everything organized. And now, finally, guys, we have 2a above and 2a below. That's common. It's a common factor to both terms, so we can cancel them. And we finally end up with b squared over c squared. So it's really just a case of applying the rules we've already learned. Don't let the letters put you off. And just group your letters then accordingly. So here's another question for you guys to try. Now, same idea, guys. You're going to be multiplying out brackets. You're going to be flipping things. But just take it nice and handy. Don't expect a nice, real, tidy answer either. Like, they begin to look a bit messy. That's, unfortunately, the nature of algebraic expressions. So I'll let you guys have a wee go at that. And now we just take a look at addition and subtraction of algebraic expressions and that'll kind of finish us up. So this one should be a fairly quick lecture in general. I think most people will be fairly familiar with this and we've already seen it with the um, using foil for a, a squared and a cubed. We just group things. So group together your x squareds. Then group together the x's. Add them up. And then group together the constant terms. The terms with no x. So you just have to be careful. I find it good practices as I go through them. I just draw a line through them. So we have 4x squared, sorry, minus 3x squared, that's 1x squared, plus 2x squared, that gives us 3x squared. Now we do the same with the x's, 2x plus 6x plus x gives us 9x. And the numbers then, minus 1 plus 7, <coughs> minus 10, minus 2, gives us minus 6. This one looks tricky again, but again, just group together the x squareds. There's an x squared, there's an x squared, there's a y squared, y squared. Now, they'll be fine, they'll group as normal, but this 5xy guys, 4yx, they're actually all the same. Remember, because of the algebraic rules developed by the scholars, minus 4yx is the same as minus 4xy. So this belongs 
with these two terms and we add those. So working our way along, we have 2y squared minus y squared. That will give us 1y squared. We have 3x squared plus 2x squared. That gives us minus x squared. And that's why we generally write the x squared second. We, If possible, we try and always start an expression with a positive term. Normally, we'd write x squared first, but because it's negative, the next positive term gets bounced to the front. There's our 3xy, it's a combination of these. 5 minus 4 plus 2 gives us 3xy. And finally, when we add the constant terms, we get 22. Always write the letters alphabetically. This is what I said in one of the first slides. So 3abc, not 3bca. PRT rather than TPR. So always write your letters in each term alphabetically. That's very important, guys, because it'll help avoid errors amongst other things. Now we take a look at these. These are the fraction ones, guys. They're the ones people don't like that very much at all. First thing we want to do is get a common denominator, which is PR. Keep the sign. And now we need to multiply each fraction. So on the right-hand side, guys, we need to multiply each fraction above and below by R. And on the left-hand side, we need to multiply each fraction above and below by P. So this will give me 3PR, sorry, 3R squared on top. And this will give me 2P squared on top. Now they've got a common denominator, and it just simply will become, there's no tidying, no cancelling can go on, and this is what we end up with as our expression. Don't be tempted to cancel the P above and below or anything like that. We'll, t we'll come to that in the next lecture, how to cancel properly with algebraic expressions take a look at another one again guys we want a common denominator 3bc notice written alph in alphabetical order sorry I've lost the left hand side but we'll keep going so here I need to multiply above and below by c and on the right hand side I need to multiply above and below by b so on top I'll have 2c and here I'll have 2AB. Here we have 2C minus 2AB. And that's our expression. So don't simplify it unless every term has something you can cancel, which it doesn't in this case. But again, I'll explain that later. So the same rules apply, guys. Remember, variables are just numbers. So treat them like numbers and everything will drop out. Be careful when cancelling. But like I said, we'll discuss cancelling more in the next lecture. So just one more problem for you guys to try. Exact same principles. Bring brackets in if you need to. So when we need to multiply top and bottom here by P, make sure you bring in a little bracket and the P goes in and multiplies into each term, etc. But I'll let you guys have a wee go at that. So that brings us to the end, guys. Thanks very much for listening, and we shall meet you again for the next lecture, Lecture 18, which is on algebra again. We just go into a little bit more detail. So thank you for your time, and we'll finish up there.